Thank you, Chairman Paulson, Vice Chairman Lee, and Ranking Member Heinrich for an extending an invitation to speak here today. I'm honored to be here. Uh, my name is Heather Boucher, and I'm Executive Director and Chief Economist at the Washington Center for Equitable Growth. We seek to advance evidence-backed ideas and policies that promote strong, stable, and broad-based economic growth. I'm here today to talk about how the economy is working and not working for most American workers. My fellow witnesses have talked about how Americans are doing well, but the reality is, for many American workers, this is just not the case. I think I'm the gloomy economist up here today. Over the past few decades, incomes and wealth have surged for those at the top, while earnings for low- and middle-income Americans have stagnated. And the reports and top-line statistics that we currently rely on to inform us about the economy often mask the economic situations our friends and neighbors across the country and in your districts are facing. As the Joint Economic Committee considers the needs of Americans up and down the income spectrum, you should consider supporting the Measuring Real Income Growth Act of 2018, which was introduced by Senator Schumer and Ranking Member Heinrich in the Senate and by Representative Maloney in the House. This bill directs the Bureau of Economic Analysis to provide the American public with measures of how economic growth is impacting Americans of different income levels. GDP growth is one of our most well-known economic metrics, but it does not reflect how the economy is performing for everyday Americans. Academic economists have constructed a data set like the one the ranking member's bill would direct the Bureau of Economic Analysis to build. It gives us a complete picture of how economic growth of the past 60 years has been shared by American workers. In 2014, for example, the data tell us that total national income growth was 2.1 percent. But for the remaining low, for the lowest earning 50 percent of all Americans, incomes grew by just 0.4 percent, while the growth for the richest 1 percent of Americans was 5.1 percent, more than five times as large. This group at the top enjoyed more than 13 times greater growth than that experienced by most Americans. Looking at aggregate GDP growth alone leads to misleading conclusions about how well the economy is serving its citizens. Unequally shared growth has detrimental effects on our economy. One particularly stark example is provided by economist Raj Chetty who found that the likelihood of children earning more than their parents in the United States has declined between the mid-20th century and today. He and his colleagues find that children born in 1940, just before the baby boomers made their way into the world, had a 90 percent chance of earning more than their parents. But for Gen Xers, those born in 1980, it's a coin flip, a 50-50 chance that they would earn more than their parents. This is not a good outcome in a growing economy. According to Professor Chetty, two-thirds two -thirds of the gap in mobility between children born in 1940 and those born in 1980 is explained by faster income growth at the very top and stagnating incomes at the middle and bottom. Policies like the recent Republican tax cuts are likely to further increase economic inequality in the United States. The Nonpartisan Tax Policy Center estimates that the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act will cause inequality to increase sharply, with high-income families enjoying a larger, larger income gains in both the short and long term than low- and middle-income families. Meanwhile, we have lowered our, lowered our ability to finance the much-needed investments that have kept children and families out of poverty and grow our middle class. The purpose of the tax system, as with public policy in general, is to support the living standards of American families. With legislation like the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act and the additional tax giveaways that Congress is currently considering, we limit our ability to invest in infrastructure, social insurance, and medical research, all of which support the well-being of American families. As this committee considers the ways to make a difference in the lives of Americans up and down the income spectrum, I urge you to consider more than just the headline numbers. Our economy is growing, but that growth is distributed unequally and many Americans are being left out. And that inequality is itself hampering upward mobility for uh, a large share of American people. I would urge the committee to think about how we can deliver economic growth that is beneficial for all Americans. Thank you for allowing me to speak today, and I look forward to answering any questions.